Coming to DARPA is like grabbing the nose cone of a rocket and holding on for dear life. DARPA's the place where if you don't invent the internet, you only get a B. A DARPA program manager quite literally invents tomorrow. Coming to work every day and being humbled by that. DARPA is not one person or one place. It's a collection of people that are excited about moving technology forward. Hello, and welcome to Voices from DARPA. I'm Stacey Wurzba, and I'll be your host. Today, we'll be hearing from Commander Jean-Paul Chrétien about the newly launched DARPA Triage Challenge, which he announced at a DARPA event in late 2022. Previous DARPA challenges have contributed to the self-driving car evolution, responsive space launch, and robotics for disaster response and recovery, and we expect equally transformational results from this one. But first, here's a bit of background on Dr. Kretian, who joined DARPA as a program manager in 2020. His interests include disease and injury prevention, operational medicine, and biothreat countermeasures. Prior to coming to DARPA, Dr. Kretian led the pandemic warning team at the Defense Intelligence Agency's National Center for Medical Intelligence. A naval medical officer, his previous assignments include senior policy advisor for biodefense in the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, team lead for innovation and evaluation at the Armed Forces Health Surveillance Branch, and director of force health protection for U.S. and NATO forces in southwest Afghanistan. Dr. Kretian earned a Bachelor of Science degree in political science from the United States Naval Academy, Master of Health Science in Biostatistics, and Doctor of Philosophy in Genetic Epidemiology degrees from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, and a Doctor of Medicine degree from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Let's hear about the challenge directly from him and the problems in triage he's trying to solve. Triage means prioritizing medical care for the patients who most urgently need it and can benefit from it. Current triage technologies and procedures are inadequate for the large-scale incidents that medics may increasingly face, both on and off the battlefield. So I'm going to explain what the problems are with how triage is done today, and there are two big ones, and then introduce a new opportunity for you to help us modernize triage and save lives. The first problem with how triage is done today is that we don't have a way of scaling the medic's hands-on assessment, and that's in the very initial stage of triage, which is called primary triage. When disaster strikes, minutes make the difference between life and death, whether that's an earthquake or a military operation, an attack on civilians. Some victims may have injuries that immediately threaten their life and that medics can treat on the spot. But what if there are many casualties and not enough responders to quickly figure out who needs those treatments? Moments count, but running from casualty to casualty, trying to find the ones who are most urgent, means that some may have to wait too long. And then the second problem with how triage is done today is that we don't know how to predict medical needs for a patient who appears to be stable. And this is in the next stage of triage, which is called secondary triage. It's a reassessment and monitoring. Standard vital signs actually don't help very much here. They barely budge after losing more than a liter of blood in controlled bleeding studies. And that's because the body can temporarily compensate until all of a sudden it can't anymore. And then it may be too late. And so here's a real life military example of how this can play out. We have multiple casualties, but there's not enough room on the medevac helicopter for all of them. So which ones get on the helicopter first? Only some of these casualties will get to surgery quickly, and the others are going to have to wait in the field, maybe for hours. And the medic has essentially no tools to predict those clinical courses to help them make the right decision. We believe the core technologies exist to solve these triage problems, and that's why we've initiated the DARPA Triage Challenge. Today's episode is for everyone, of course, but we especially want emergency medical responders, tactical combat casualty care responders, trauma surgeons, the medical community, sensor developers, and AI machine learning technology developers to take notice. This is DARPA's newest prize challenge. It's in the vein of others you may have heard of, like the Subterranean Challenge, 
robotics challenge, the autonomous vehicle challenges, all of these spurred outside of the box thinking and drove their fields forward. And that's what we're hoping for with the DTC. It's a three-year effort. It's gonna bring diverse communities together and you can be a part of this to create new tools for triage and make it scalable and predictive. The foundations of the challenge are non-invasive sensors to capture physiological data from casualties, algorithms to identify novel injury signatures in those data, and communities, emergency responders, technology developers, you, to make sure we develop tools that are operationally relevant. The DARPA Trias Challenge will use a series of challenge events to spur development of novel physiological features for medical triage. The program aims to drive breakthrough innovations in identification of signatures of injury that will help medical responders perform scalable, timely, and accurate triage. Of particular interest are mass casualty incidents in both civilian and military settings when medical resources are limited relative to the need. So here's the ultimate vision that inspires the DARPA triage challenge. In primary triage, we could imagine someday autonomous platforms with different types of standoff sensors that capture physiological data from casualties and algorithms process those data to help the medics determine which ones they need to go and see and evaluate and treat first. And then for secondary triage, medics use non-invasive sensors, these are contact sensors, that are placed on casualties, which continually monitor physiology and algorithms process those data to help the medics anticipate medical needs. The challenge has two domains. For our primary triage competition, we'll create physical simulations of mass casualty scenes. And competitors bring your platforms with standoff sensors and algorithms, and we'll score you on autonomous casualty assessment, how fast and how accurate. And then for secondary triage, we'll provide de-identified clinical data from DARPA's RITMO program that we announced a few months ago. Let me interject here just a second. The DARPA Research Infrastructure for Trauma with Medical Observations, or RITMO program, seeks to develop retrospective and prospective trauma data sets that will enable future identification of physiological features or signatures of injury that predict medical needs. The aim is to use this data from the RITMO program to help identify novel physiological signatures for the DARPA triage challenge. Okay, now back to JP. Bring your algorithms and we'll score you on prediction of life-saving interventions that actually occurred. And both competitions will become increasingly difficult over the three years. The DARPA triage challenge takes place from fall 2023 to fall 2026, over five tracks. Participants may compete through DARPA-funded tracks or through self-funding. We'll have prizes for top-performing teams with a total pool of more than $7 million, and we'll have tracks for both DARPA-funded and self-funded teams. For DARPA-funded teams, proposals are due in February, and for everyone, the challenge kicks off next fall. So please check out the website for more information, join the challenge, and help save lives. Thank you for listening to this Voices from DARPA podcast. For more information about the DARPA Triage Challenge, visit triagechallenge.darpa.mil. Thank you for joining us, and special thanks to Tom Shortridge for producing this episode.